Today we're gonna to make a tiki classic. Three dots and a dash. For this drink, you're gonna need a pilsner glass, a jigger, a measuring spoon, a fancy straw, a cocktail shaker, citrus juicers, a fine mesh trainer, a cutting board and a small knife, a Lewis bag and an ice mallet, and a fancy toothpick. Or in this case, a beach bum berry cocktail pick. This drink uses Martinique rum, Demerara rum, Falernum, Pimento Dram, freshly squeezed lime juice, freshly squeezed orange juice, honey syrup, aromatic bitters, and for garnish, a pineapple and maraschino cherries. This drink was created by Don Beach in the 1940s. Don loved really complex cocktails, so you could tell this was a Don drink just by looking at the list of ingredients. However, in its heyday, only a couple people knew the ingredient list for this drink. Don was very secretive about his original concoctions. His popular drinks were a hot commodity, and he was very actively protecting them as trade secrets. This drink, like most classic tiki drinks, was uncovered through the diligent efforts of everyone's favorite tiki archaeologist, Beachbum Barry. Barry found the recipe for this drink in the notebook of Hank Riddell, a 40-year veteran of several different Down the Beachcomber locations. This is the same notebook in which Barry discovered the recipe for the missionary's downfall. The name of this drink was a reference to a popular slogan at the time. In January 1941, Victor de Lavallee introduced the idea of V for Victory. De Lavallee was a Belgian national living in London who hosted a BBC radio show targeted at his fellow countrymen in Nazi-occupied Belgium. He encouraged his listeners to adopt the letter V as a symbol of resistance. This took the form of graffiti and the V sign among others. It caught on in Nazi-occupied territories, and several months later, it was adopted by Winston Churchill, who really helped popularize the slogan and the V for Victory sign. Another popular way to signal V for Victory was through Morse code, and the Morse code for V is three dots and a dash. The excellent Tiki Bar in Chicago took its name from this drink, and they certainly do the drink justice, so you'll definitely want to order one when you're there. Traditionally, the garnish is three cherries and a pineapple spear, which represents the three dots and a dash. Since I'm already using pineapple for this drink, I also like hitting it with some pineapple fronds. You're gonna use very little of the pineapple in this one. It's basically just for the garnish. So juice the rest of your pineapple to make Jungle Birds or Mr. Belly Highs, or blend it into a couple of Missionary's Downfalls. Pimento Dram is a rum-based allspice liqueur. It has a powerful flavor. A little goes a long way. And just like in the Ancient Mariner, I like to dial back on the full measurement. Even a quarter ounce, which is what the recipe calls for, is a little too much for me. It really overpowers the other flavors in the drink. So in this case, I'm only using a teaspoon of it. But if you like a big hit of that pumpkin spice flavor in your drink, don't let me stop you. This is just how I prefer it. For the honey syrup, I'm using a darker honey at a three to one honey to water ratio. But use the honey syrup that works best for you. The Falernum in this drink is a homemade version that Beach Bumberry recommends at length in his books. Feel free to use your favorite version of Falernum, but keep in mind that whichever one you choose, it's going to make a difference in the flavor profile of the final cocktail. The base spirit is an aged Martinique rum, which is made from fresh cane juice instead of molasses. It's the same rum that makes up half the base spirit of the Mai Tai. The other rum is a Demerara, or Guyanese rum, which is one of the three rums in the Navy Grog. Feel free to swap in other rums if that's what you have on hand. But this combination is big and grassy, with a caramelized molasses -y finish. So you'll want to do something in that neighborhood. This drink has a lot going on in the flavor department. From honey to allspice, to complex rum and spiced citrus, it's a little wild and on the sweet side. Kind of like the taste of victory. Before I get started, I like to cut, squeeze, strain, and bottle my citrus juices. That way it's easier to pour when it comes time to measure. Then prep your garnishes. Pluck a couple nice looking pineapple fronds from the top of your pineapple. Then strip and slice your pineapple. Stick three cherries on your cocktail pick and finish it with a pineapple spear. And there you have your garnishes. We'll set those aside for now. Next, beat up some ice. Add ice cubes to the Lewis bag and roll it up. If you don't have a Lewis bag, you can use a bar towel. Just fold it up so the ice can't escape. With the Lewis bag rolled, crush it like Patton's third army rolling through Bastogne. 
Then measure out six ounces of crushed ice and set it aside. Next measure an ounce and a half of Martinique rum, add that to the shaker. Measure half an ounce of Demerara rum, add that to the shaker. Measure half an ounce of honey syrup, add that to the shaker. Measure half an ounce of lime juice, add that to the shaker. Measure half an ounce of orange juice, add that to the shaker. Measure a teaspoon of pimento dram, or alternately you can do a quarter ounce of pimento dram, add that to the shaker. Measure a quarter ounce of falerna, add that to the shaker, and hit it with a dash of aromatic bitters. Add the six ounces of crushed ice, and give everything a quick shake to chill it down and give it some dilution. Pour the contents of your shaker unstrained into your Pilsner glass, and top it off with some more crushed ice. Place your Morse code garnish on top of the drink, then work in some pineapple fronds and your fancy straw. And there it is, a drink to victory. Three dots and a dash, a Kole Muluna. Click here for more videos, be sure to subscribe, and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For links, more info, and the printed recipe, check out the description below.